Of course, we've got the one and only Jenny McCartney in the booth, the social media goddess herself, uh, pushing those buttons, making the show go again today. And, uh, well, yeah, the co-hosts. I guess we'll go with the co-hosts. we got some of those, of course, coming to us uh, live via satellite, as always, from his, uh, well, his perch, I guess, high atop the Mill Bay Studios in beautiful Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada is the one and only Louis Lawless. Yes, high atop there. Are you there, Louis? You know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's Louis Lawless. Yes, we got that. Don't worry. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on on the show? <laughs> <laughs> now you go right ahead, sir. We've we've got you covered. Uh, it's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. All right. And also joining us from his wonderful, beautiful, uh, stately... I must say, apartment uh, in Manhattan here in the big city is the one, the only, uh, what's his name again? Oh, yes, Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> uh, are, are you ready, sir? What the fuck? Huh? <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Good. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right, Gilbert Godfrey joining us from his lovely home here in the city. And uh, also joining us is, of course, the one, the only George Takei, all the way from his home in Los Angeles, California. George, thank you for coming. I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, and, and thank you. That's that's awesome. Now, well, is this thing on? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's on. Is this on? Is this on? I can't tap it. I would tap it, but I won't do that. So. There you go. That's well... Right. Only one, Meeps. That's us. The only one. HTLA Radio 1 New York. And you're here and you're listening. And this is Straight Talk. And, yeah, we've got 90 minutes of uh, springtime in the city stories for you tonight. And, um, yeah, lots of social injustice stories. I'm in the mood for for ranting. We said we weren't going to do a rant show, but here we are. And it's going to turn into a rant show. It is, yes. <laughs> I can't help but be angry about the stories. You know, there's just too much to be excited about. And everybody's got to bring us down with all this stuff. Stupidity. That's right. Oh, well, we'll talk about that, too, because we've got a great show coming up for you that uh, we've got in development for a little while now. And we're going to launch that Wednesday. And we'll talk about that a bit later. That's pretty exciting. That's called The Spotlight with Kate and Crush. Absolutely, uh-huh. and uh, tonight, a bit of a free-for-all. We're going to tear it up for you on tonight's Straight Talk. Everything from the day's events to some politics good and goodiness and the struggle, of course, to maintain home and work. We'll get into it all tonight. Professional businesswomen that I talk to, they do the work, but it's just the corporate work, and they think that's enough because, damn it, I've, I've just put 12 hours a day in today in, in my job. and Right. They feel deserving of something else, not to come home and take care of the kids and not to come home and take care of the husband and not to come home and take care of anything else. Right. It's time for them to kick their feet up now and go go hit the bars and relax or something because they've earned it. And I'm here to say that as a man, we we, we, we do that all the time. We always have. We we go out and work our full-time jobs or more. Right. And we come home and we're still expected to be the dad. We're still expected to help the kids with the homework. We're still expected to, to, to have activities and stuff with our family and have that interaction and put that time in. Sure. Maybe that's why we get 100% of our pay instead of 70% of our pay. Right. Right. Well, you're not... Well, in the tradition now, men are also expected to do half the housework. And half of all that stuff, whereas it used to just be before, you know, the garbages and the lawns and all that stuff that you do, the man stuff, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, So, yes, and unfortunately, in some cases, in a great majority of of the households, now more often than not, the women are working and 
you know, I have so many, you know, friends that I know that their husbands take care of the kids and drop the kids at school and do the school activities and do the projects and yes. wash the clothes. And yes, the- but, yes, but with that comes the dreaded beta male because there's not a single one right. of those men that I have met that I would look up to in battle. No, of course not. And <laughs> this is, to our, to our thinking, you know, to our thinking, and while it took us years in, uh uh-huh, and while it took us years in practice, it, it was an ideology that we shared from the moment that we met anyway. Yeah. The whole, you know, that was our vision for what the ideal family was. Well, I don't know what the ideal family vision is for you, but for me, I don't know. I, be mom walking around the house topless. And my 17 daughters walking around the house topless. I don't know. It, it's kind of weird, too. I'm, I'm not a booby man. Anyway, <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it may be to you. To us here in the city, New York City, it's 3 p.m. Eastern, and it is time for your coffee and cigarettes a Tuesday espresso. Oh, yeah. And, and what do we got today? Hmm? Oh, well. Allow me to fill your ears with the golden tones of everything we have for you today. Today on the big show, don't break out those party balloons on same-sex marriage just yet. No, not yet. And things are heating up in Baltimore. But we'll tell you about a mom who kicks her son's ass, pulls him out of the riot, and kicks his butt all the way home. Well done, mom. And it's also not a good day for nurses. No, it's not a good day at all for nurses. I've got a story for you about the one nurse who dies after a fall from a rescue helicopter's hoist. And, uh, well, another story about another nurse who undergoes unneeded breast surgery after a medical mix-up. Oh, I'm sorry, madam, you didn't need those breasts reduced or taken away. You didn't have cancer. Yeah. Eh, she's just shrugging it off. I didn't need those boobs anyway. Hey! Well, also, we've got a story, of course, about Iran seizing a Marshall Islands flagged cargo ship. Yes, everybody's been talking about it today. Oh my god, the, the, Iran has seized an American warship. Well, no. No, it's, it's not an American warship. No, it's not. It's just a cargo ship. Calm down. Let's, let's take it down from DEFCON 2. We've got all that and so much more on the show today, so come on in and grab a cup, have a seat, and light one up. It's coffee time. Let's do it. Let's rock it. No. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in a good mood today. What do you want? <laughs> Just sue me. Yes. Well, welcome to HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. Thank you very much. We're currently in the city in the Central Park. It is 69 degrees today, partly cloudy, but mostly sun. And, uh, well, we're welcoming that 70, which should be here somewhere within the hour. Yes, it's the Tuesday Espresso on your coffee and cigarettes for Tuesday the 28th of April 2015. Brought to you by the fine folks at Tim Hortons, New York City. Now with eight fine locations in that city to serve all your your coffee and baked goods needs. Tim Hortons always fresh. And let me tell you, we, we have nothing but, thanks to the sponsorship deal struck with Tim Hortons, nothing but Tim Hortons at HTLA Studio 2 in Manhattan. And, hmm... Ah, yes. Every sip is a joy. Absolutely. Also, we're brought to you by the fine folks at PreSonus. Uh, we're broadcasting to you live right now uh, in HTLA Studio 2 in Manhattan with our PreSonus 2442 Studio Live Digital Mixer for the best 
yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it, the best in digital and professional audio gear. Check them out, presonus.com. Also, to let you know, the one, the only, yes, the former social media goddess herself, the one, the only Jenny McCartney, is in the booth today, pushing the buttons, making the show go, and yes, she is indeed topless, absolutely, as the as the way I like it. There you go. And as the host, I get to dictate, you know, certain things in my contract, and, and that's one of them, and, and you know... Uh, uh, we'll just go with that. Yeah, there you go. So there she is. And uh, moving on today, of course, uh, as always, we do have co-hosts on the show, uh, guest co-hosts, I guess you call them, and um, coming to us live via satellite, because he doesn't like us to say that he's just using a telephone, is the one, the only Louis Lawless, all the way from uh, Mill Bay Studios in beautiful Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada. Louis, are you there, sir? Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on on the show? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, you can, but uh, there, you know, there's no telling what could happen. Um, power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, and and I've, I've got to be be a hundred percent with you on that. Uh, we we see that firsthand almost every day. Uh, it's just life, and I love doing it. I love doing these kind of stories, anyway. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's 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 a it's a joy. It's a, it's an absolute. I don't know what's the the word. It's about, I mean, about fucking time. Move on. Move on. Okay, that's probably the word. Also joining us from his uh, spacious, sprawling, wonderful uh, apartment here, uh, just about eight blocks down the street from Studio Two here in Manhattan. Is the one, the only, Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert, are you there, sir? And if you are there, are you ready? What the fuck? Eh? <laughs> Come on. I'm ready. That's the magic word I wanted to hear. <laughs> you know, and of course, that's that's not a word. It's, it's actually a series of words. It's a, <laughs> What the hell is that? I, <laughs> okay. Calm down, you're going to have a stroke. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, Gilbert Godfrey's joining us, and, um, well, that third slot, yes, we, we used to have the one, the only Arnold Schwarzenegger in that slot, but we've, uh, well, no, let's not, let's be fair here. It wasn't we, it was, it was me, I kicked him off the show, I couldn't stand his stupidity anymore. <laughs> You know when you you we do a lot of political shows on the, on this uh, show yes. and and we do a lot of, of serious stories yes. and we we do a lot of you know I mean we do a lot of fun stuff too but uh, you know when it comes right down to it you know uh, you know I, I get Louis feedback from a story and yes. it, it's good and well sometimes yes <laughs> yeah we get Louis feedback and then of course we'll go to you Gilbert and yes. get yours and and then we we. We went down to Stupidville. And <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it, it just wasn't working for me, you know. It's <laughs> now, here's a segue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's fight Hitler! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, let's not and say we did. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Break for a commercial. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> No, we can't break for a commercial just yet. We just actually got the show started. Jesus, <laughs> come on. Uh, but before we do get to, to roll here, though, uh, of course, we have to uh, allow the one, the only Gilbert to uh, regale us with his uh, song, his his lovely, joyous tune. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, sir, if you could carry on with that, we need to get going here. Nah, 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 nah. Ba ma 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 oh yeah Who wants to grow up who wants responsibility Oh no not me Who wants to show up and work until you're ninety three oh. Now everybody says you're running wild The teacher's calling you a problem Ooh. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I, I never get tired of that. No. Whoa. <laughs> Gilbert, calm down. You're going to die. Yes. 
you know, I'm the most talented guy in this room. Uh, you, you're probably the only guy in that room. Yeah. <laughs> Well, moving on today, our first show on Coffee and Air. Our first show, I guess. <laughs> I swear, that, that Arnold Schwarzenegger is rubbing off on yes. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first show we got on the show was. Uh... They get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh... that, I'd like to have that as my slogan in <laughs> <of> life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm, I'm sure you could. I don't think anybody else is using it. Yeah. All right. Calm, 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 calm the hell down. Yes. Jeez. Okay. Uh, yes. So the first story on uh, coffee and cigarettes today is, of course, the uh, justices appear cautious, divided. Yes, divided they are on same-sex marriage. In Washington today, the Supreme Court uh, appeared both cautious and deeply divided today on whether to change an opposite-sex definition of marriage that several justices said has existed for millennia. The court's conservatives indicated within minutes that a victory for same-sex couples on what has emerged as a major civil rights issue of the early 21st century would not come easily as many gays had anticipated. <laughs> well, the word that keeps coming back to me is millennia. Justice Anthony Kennedy, who often cast the deciding vote on the court, said during oral arguments in the landmark challenge to state laws prohibiting same-sex marriages, this definition has been with us for millennia. It's very difficult for the court to say, oh, well, we know better. Chief Justice John Roberts echoed that point, telling a lawyer for the same-sex couples challenging those bans that, quote, you're not seeking to join that institution, you're seeking to change what that institution is. So stick that in your little frickin' rainbow flag and fly it! Yeah! <laughs> It's so nice to actually see some common sense finally come out of the Supreme Court. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, but those same justices appeared more willing to find a middle ground when the topic shifted to whether states must recognize same-sex marriages performed illegally in other states. That issue would be pertinent only if the court does not find a constitutional right to same-sex marriage. Justice Samuel Alito wondered whether recognizing out-of-state marriages represented something in between, adding that, quote, I suppose it's possible, isn't it? Yes, thank you, Alito. Uh, confuse things further with more questions. Yes. <laughs> Well, the early comments from Kennedy and Roberts were a warning that their votes to allow gays and lesbians to marry throughout the nation may be difficult to win. But Kennedy later had an equally tough questions and comments for the states seeking to keep their same-sex marriage bans on the books. Now, the, the important thing here is, and I've, I've said this before because this is important. Yes. Well, thanks for agreeing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Everybody with the, 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 the gay rights rainbow parade thing, <laughs> flag flag people, whatever you want to call yes. them. <clears throat> well, well, all of them are, are like, oh, there's 38 states that recognize gay marriage. Uncle Crash did some research. <laughs> ah, yes, he did. And the fact is that only four states actually put it out to a vote – among the people of their states uh, to uh, legalize same-sex marriage. So, in actuality, four states okayed it. The rest of them uh, didn't even give it to a vote to their people. They just pushed it through because the Supreme Court said so. <laughs> <laughs> they get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Or too many people love them. Yeah. Yeah. But let's be choosy about the people that love us. Yes. That's, it has to be a man or another woman or another man-woman thing. I don't know. <laughs> 
Well, when former Michigan Solicitor General John Birch said in the rise in the out-of-wedlock birth showed the decline of marriages to the detriment of children, Kennedy noted that gay and lesbian couples frequently adopt these children because, quote, they can't none have none. Yeah. <laughs> I think the argument cuts quite against you, he said. The justices' eventual ruling on the case, actually six cases cases uh, currently consolidated from Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Kentucky, will determine whether same-sex marriage becomes legal nationwide or whether states retain authority to ban it. A decision is expected by late June. And it's around about the time the Iranians get their nuclear warheads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first hour and a half of arguments reveal the court apparently deeply divided on whether the Constitution requires states to permit gay and lesbian couples to marry. So tense was the debate that when a protester stood and yelled, quote, The Bible teaches that if you support gay marriage, you will burn in hell. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Justice Antonin Scalia jokingly called the interruption, quote, Rather refreshing. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, the court's more liberal justices pounced on Birch, questioning how excluding same-sex couples could harm the relationships of opposite-sex couples. Its more conservative members jousted back with questions about whether the justices should allow voters to settle the issue or simply adopt a wait-and-see attitude on gay marriage. A lawyer for the couples challenging the state bans, Mary Benuto, said that they can sign the same-sex couples to an outlier status. The Obama administration's lawyer, David Verrelli, uh, urged the court to not wait, telling them instead that they must decide now whether the Constitution's guarantee of equal protection permits states to exclude same-sex couples from marriage. Gay and lesbian people are equal. They deserve equal protection of the laws, and they deserve it now, damn it, he said. They threw him out of the court. Yes. <clears throat> Now, the court's more liberal justices uh, sharply question whether states could justify blocking same-sex marriages, challenging states' arguments that such laws advance a government interest in connecting children to their biological parents. How does withholding marriage from one group increase value to the other group? Justice Sonia Sotomayor asked. The state needs some reason for that exclusion. Yes. Birch replied that the Michigan voters could have worried that changing the meaning of marriage from uh, one focused on children to one focused on adults' relationships could have consequences for families across generations. The state's interest isn't sanctifying loving relationships, he says. It's in connecting children with their parents. Yes. Kennedy challenged that reasoning, pressing Birch on whether states could also prohibit couples who do not intend to have children from getting married and suggesting that the bans could themselves harm children by blocking same-sex couples from adopting. Well, I really hate to do it, but, you know, it, it's not convoluted or screwed up or, or, you know, foggy enough. How about we throw this in the mix? How about where's the, the American traditional family's right to raise their children traditionally, i.e. not having to explain to little Jimmy or little Susie why little David over there has got two moms or two dads. <laughs> well, the high court challenge to state's gay marriage bans is destined to make even more of an indelible mark on history than the two cases decided by the court back in 2013. United States v. Windsor, which forced the federal government to recognize gay marriages, and Hollingsworth v. Perry, which made California the 13th state to allow them when the justices refused to intercede. California. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta, you get, you, you, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, you gotta at least love the way Arnold says California. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're going to go for our first two-minute commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to tell you all about that mom who, uh, well, yeah, mom, Baltimore. Uh, mom plus Baltimore equals. We'll be back in two. You've got it locked to HTLA Radio 1, New York. What if there was a coffee that was sourced 
from some of the world's most renowned growing regions. Abundant with rich, fertile soil. What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes, just the way you like it? Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons, always fresh, always great tasting coffee. Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Cooksville, Stowville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonneville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow. That's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. I've been to Moncton, Picton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby, Miramichi, Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellow Knight, Whitehorse, Cornerbrook, none of it. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the prairies, bare man. I breathed the mountain air. I've traveled, I've done my share, man. I've been everywhere, man. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember... Oh! Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials! You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power? Yeah, I do! Power! I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at, at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got that love. There's only one place to get more Taylor. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. He was always nice to me. Well, you know, I, I don't care what you say. Um, he's not going to be Bach. <laughs> All right, calm down, calm down. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to the big show this afternoon. Your coffee and cigarettes on HTLA or Radio 1, New York's best talk. Still 69 degrees in Central Park and mostly sunny right now. we got a low of 52 tonight, and then it's going to be right back up there. High of 73 for Wednesday. Looking forward to that. Because then we'll be 
stuck in the studio here. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what do you do? I, I don't know what you do. You, you just live in that damn shoe and keep on going. Yes. Yeah, that's all you do. <clears throat> I remember uh, being on your radio show in Chicago. Uh, you did. We had a wild time. We're not going to go through the alley again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I could, I could see you feel very uncomfortable talking. <laughs> <laughs> Now there was another time you you were when um I I know you you're very secretive about your drug problem. Look man, don't be talking about my drug problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's becoming black. I like it. Do a little rap. <laughs> All right, back to the back to the damn show, kids. That's right. Here, Tuesday Espresso, Tuesday the 28th of April 2015, brought to you by the fine folks at Tim Hortons in New York City, and with eight fine locations in the city to serve all your coffee and baked goods needs. Tim Hortons, always fresh. Yeah. It, it seemed like Dean Martin was uncomfortable, too. He just didn't have enough rum. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you you uh, did something uh, yesterday, Gilbert, on the show. Yes. Um, it was a, an impersonation. It was uh, uh, Gil. No, it was yes. It was Gilbert Godfrey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always love it when you do those impressions of Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> No, you did some impressions, uh, and and uh, we actually had some uh, some email uh, over overnight last night. Uh, some listeners were listening to it, and we're wondering uh, that's that's supposed to be your impression of Cary Grant as one of the Jewish priests, correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, all right. Take it away. Give it to us again. Yeah. Hey, Joe, <laughs> Hey, Cary Grant uh, as a canter. Hey, Joe, Hey, Michigan. Oh man, I tell you that that you, you just can't get any better than that right there. That's. <laughs> That's that's the the cat's butt right there. Yes. That's, <laughs> every time we have uh, uncomfortable moments on the show, now you can just lay into it with that. Yeah. Hey, Joe, Joe, hey. I swear it's contagious, my friend. Yeah. Oh my God, he's becoming black. I like it. Do a little rap here too. Oh, not again. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I'm not, that was like three minutes ago. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, welcome back to the show. And uh, in the first uh, segment of the show, there we told you all about the uh, justices working on the, uh, I guess the the problem child that is gay marriage. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, <clears throat> of course, we've got to move on to the riots in Baltimore. Yes. Just because that's just so much fun. Yes. You know, you know we're where do you go from gay marriage in the Supreme Court? Well, you've got to go to street riots. Yeah. <laughs> power. That's why power is corrupt, and it is. We see it every day. We see it in every job. It's the same thing. The, the, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, especially in the uh, Supreme Court. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but really, I, I shouldn't, you know, kick on them. Yes. You know, that's that's not really fair or nice. I'll I'll wait until they rule wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the the news, of course, if you hadn't heard, is that there's been rioting in Baltimore because it's it's all about stringing up the black man these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or at least that's what they want us to think. Yes. Huh? <clears throat> well, there's a, an interesting story today about that, and it's it's not all bad. Mom slaps son and rips him from the Baltimore uh, riots like a redheaded stepchild. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yes, apparently an angry mother is being applauded after she was caught on camera slapping her son and ripping him out of the Baltimore riots yesterday. WMAR-TV captured footage of the woman screaming at the young man, dressed head to toe in black, 
to, quote, take the mask off and telling him to get his ass over here as she slaps him around like a little bitch. <laughs> Well, of course, by late Monday, the video had become viral. Yes. <laughs> it actually had become so popular that Baltimore Police Commissioner Anthony Batts referenced the incident during a press conference. CBS Baltimore reported. He said that many of the uh, rioters were young people from nearby high schools, and he encouraged parents to tell their children to go the F home. <laughs> And if you saw in one scene, you had one mother who grabbed her child who had a hood on his head and started smacking them around because she was so embarrassed. I wish I had more parents who took charge of their kids tonight, Bats told reporters. I think these were a youth coming out of the high school, and they thought it was cute to throw cinder blocks at the police department and address it that way. Charles Payne, Fox Business and Network contributor, tweeted that Balt a Baltimore woman is actually the mother of the year. <laughs> Uh, yes, and for all of those listeners out there who think that this show is racist against blacks, well, think again, because I am very proud to say that this was a very overweight black woman. Yes. <laughs> uh, so if she wants the mother of the year vote, she's getting it 100% from the crash man. Yes. There we go. Well, on the darker side, Baltimore deals with devastation, a nation with hard questions being asked today. Scattered protests and a massive cleanup are underway today as the city braced for whatever comes next after a long night of violence. The governor and mayor promised increased security around shoe stores. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the uh, president had to rear his ugly head. Yes. <laughs> Yes, he promised a thorough investigation into the death in police custody of Freddie Gray. Obama also said economic and cultural problems must be addressed to fully solve the problem of violence on the streets here and across the nation. He just blows me away with how smart he is. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, it's it's not every day you, you come across someone with, with this, this many smarts. And, and when you think about it, you know... You might be thinking I'm joking. Yes. But he replaced a president that pulled the door that you push and walked into the wall. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I think you you got uh, well as Arnie puts it, you've got shocks in both tanks. fucking <laughs> <laughs> time move on, move on. Yes. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. Well, still, he stressed that's no excuse for the violence. When individuals get crowbars and start opening doors to loot, they're not protesting, Obama said in a response to a query at a White House news conference today. They're not making a statement. They're stealing. When they burn down a building, they're committing arson, and they're destroying and undermining businesses and opportunities in their own communities. Even if it is to start their own business on eBay selling stolen shoes. <laughs> Well, in Baltimore today, schools were closed, the streets were quiet, but wreckage was everywhere as a solemn mayor, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, toured the destruction. Quote, we will not let these deplorable and cowardly acts of violence ruin our city, she tweeted. I sincerely want to thank all those out there cleaning up the streets and sharing their love for hashtag our city. <laughs> Uh, Rawlings Blake, who called the rioters thugs, dismissed claims that she waited too long to send in a heavy police and National Guard presence. She cited a delicate balancing act between managing a problem and making it worse. It's very important that we respond to the situation as it is on the ground, she said. There are always going to be armchair quarterbacks who have never had to sit in my seat, she says. After hours after Freddie Gray was laid to rest Monday, protests ostensibly against police uh, violence quickly t deteriorated into devastating riots. Roving bands of looters, uh, some armed with crowbars, roamed the city, hurling rocks at police, destroying patrol cars, smashing store windows, and torching buildings. About 20 businesses and more than 140 cars burned as the mayhem spilled into Tuesday's early hours from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. this morning. The city's Office of Emergency Management reported 10 major fires. Quote, please allow members of the fire department to respond to their calls for service, the police tweeted at 2 a.m. We're still hearing reports of them being assaulted. Yeah, they're actually out beating firemen. Yeah, you thought I had a drug problem. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> 
Yes, later Tuesday, a resident swept glass and debris from battered sidewalks and streets while National Guard members stood sentry. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan also toured parts of the city Tuesday. He said the violence began about 3 p.m. Monday, but added that the National Guard did not enter the fray until asked by the mayor three hours later. He said a couple thousand Guard members and city police are patrolling the city, and another thousand Guard members would be in the city by Tuesday night. So if y'all thinking about stocking up on the uh, old shoes, uh, <laughs> them National Guards has got burrets. Yes. <laughs> And you don't want them to start killing black folk. <laughs> now, the vast majority of people in Baltimore who were protesting did so in a peaceful way, but unfortunately a similar group of people acted out in a violent way, Hogan said. What happened last night is not going to happen tonight, I goddamn assure you. <laughs> last night, more than 200 arrests were made and more than a dozen police officers were injured. Police Commissioner Anthony Batts said, adding that he believed tensions were easing. Still, authorities ordered 10 p.m. curfews for the rest of the week. The Baltimore Orioles postponed games scheduled for Monday and Tuesday nights. Many businesses wary of resurgent of violence that had overwhelmed police and firefighters closed on Tuesday. The, the list included Security Square Mall with more than 100 stores in western Baltimore and many downtown businesses were closed as well. Also, mutual fund houses T. Rowe Price and Leg Mason announced that most employees were working from home. Jamal Bryant, a local activist and pa- pastor for... The Empowerment Temple opened his church for teens with no place to go due to school closures. He promised conduct training in how to protest without destroying the city. (laughs) Uh, Bryant tweeted, We're also going to take high school students to go clean our neighborhoods. We must rise from the ashes and meet at Empowerment Tem 2 at 10. Bat said it appeared that a number of gangs met and decided that each group would take out a police officer after Monday's funeral of Freddie Gray, 25-year-old black man who died April 19th after suffering a severe spine injury while in police custody. Social media was alive, of course, with hashtag purge. <laughs> Uh, Before and during the mayhem, an apparent allusion to the film The Purge, which featured a 12-hour period in which all crime was legal. Isn't it funny how when black people get pissed off, all of a sudden all crime is legal? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, You know, when white people get pissed off, you know, I don't know what it is. All golf courses are 10 bucks at the door? What what do we do? Uh, well, Bats implored parents to take control of their children who might be taking part in the rioting. He said some of the 15 buildings that burned took great effort to erect in ailing communities that desperately need them. And now they don't have them no more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, of course, there's a whole bunch of senseless tweets. Yes. <laughs> you know, got to have the, the, the tweets from the, the morons who don't know anything. <laughs> Uh, and stick them on the story so that it seems like they know something. There you go. <clears throat> did I? Did I just say that? I did. I, I did say that. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> well, we do have to go for our second commercial break, but never fear. When we come back, we've got a well, a couple of stories about a couple of nurses that just ain't doing so well today. <laughs> Actually, one of them is dead. We'll be back in two. You've got it locked to New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1. Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Because I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Cooksville, Stowville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonneville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow, that's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. I've been to Moncton, Pickford. 
Hampton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby, Miramichi, Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellow Knight, Whitehorse, Cornerbrook, none of it. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the prairies bare, man. I breathed the mountain air. I've traveled, I've done my share, man. I've been everywhere, man. It could be 7 in the morning. Or 10 at night. In Chilliwack, B.C. Or St. Peter's, Nova Scotia. It could be Michelle. Or Mark. Or Jen. But whenever. Wherever you order that cup of Tim Hortons premium blend coffee, you know that it's always. 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 Fresh. From Newfoundland and Labrador to Vancouver Island, Tim Hortons, a coffee all our own. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the best worst part was the shower. My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towels. Shower curtain defined that whole vacation for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got that love. There's only one place to get more Taylor. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Oh, yes. Both the Nazis on Hogan's Heroes were Jews. Uh, yeah, actually, I did know that. Um, funny you mentioned that, actually. Um, yeah. Wow. It reminds me, too. Sandra Bullock, actually. She's Jewish. Now, how did you find out that Sandra Bullock was Jewish? Oh, it was more of a feel. Well, you see, I've always had this, this crush on her uh, ever since, you know, Speed. And, yes. Uh, uh, she's, she's just been all that and a bag of freaking chips to me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, that and, and, and her nose. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But how did you, and it would be a, a Jewish wedding, of course, oh, yeah. but how did you find out that Sandra Bullock was Jewish? Uh, well, basically, I, um, uh, well, I told you, it's, it's the nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> L'chaim, yeah. So, because I always thought she she admits to being German. Oh, no, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, that's, or I don't know if she, but like her mother was a big opera, German opera star. Oh, yeah, I did not know that, yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow, there you go. Now, here's a segue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll get you, General Rommel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk, of course, in your coffee and cigarettes for your Tuesday, 
the 28th of April, 2015. That's right, your Tuesday Espresso brought to you by Tim Hortons, New York City. Now with those eight fine locations in the city to serve all your coffee and baked goods needs, that's Tim Hortons. Always fresh. Kind of like me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am. I'm a womanizer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember, too, when we were in the alleyway no, don't and go, saw zipped up. Don't, don't go here again. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> let's, I don't know. Let's talk about uh, Hitler or something more. Yeah. Let's fight Hitler! <laughs> <clears throat> Well, welcome back to Coffee and Cigarettes, yes. 69 degrees, still in Central Park right now, and uh, sunny, and, and, you know, it's nice. It's, well, I mean, it's not uh, Jewish Florida nice, you know, but... <laughs> it, it's nice enough for the crash man. So moving on today, we've got a story, uh, actually two stories, about some uh, nurses having some kind of unfortunate incidents. Yes. Um, <laughs> This uh, first story comes to us, unfortunately, from KVUE-TV in Austin, Texas. In Austin, Texas, a nurse has died after falling from a hoist on a helicopter while rescuing a woman who fell from a hiking trail on Monday night. The Travis County Star Flight Helicopter was responding to reports of a woman who fell. The helicopter was hoisting the woman into the aircraft when 46-year-old flight nurse uh, Kristen McLean fell from that hoist. In a news release, Starflight said McLean became detached from the hoist while retrieving a woman who had fallen in the Barton Creek Greenbelt. McLean was pronounced dead on the scene. It was not clear how far she fell. Check your damn altimeter, you frickin' <laughs> dumbasses. Anyway, the rescued woman was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Uh, Star Flight Program Director Casey Ping said Tuesday that McLean has been with the company for seven years. The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board are investigating the incident. Further details were not released. The FAA and the NTSB have been contacted, and the investigation is ongoing, said Ping. Star Flight provides aerial emergency medical services. So next time you need some aerial flight medical services, don't call them. <laughs> he needs love, Chris. Come on. Well, I know. You got you to dispense more love from yourself. All these people are, are hurting here. <sighs> I'm trying, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. They get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Is that why she fell? Really? <laughs> Uh, Louis, I, I don't think so. You know, I, I think it, it was actually a, completely an accident. Uh, uh, it's just life, and I love doing it. I love doing these kind of stories anyway. Oh, yes, they, they warm my heart, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gilbert, this is one of those times. Hey, you, Joe, Joe, <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Great for a commercial. Yeah. <laughs> well, our second in our two naughty nurse stories today. <laughs> okay, calm down. You're going to die. Yes. Yeah. Well, a mom in the UK has been left physically and emotionally scarred after the hospital where she worked as a breast care oncology nurse mixed up her own test results with another patient's and told her that she must undergo surgery to remove aggressive breast cancer. Four days after the 2013 surgery, they admitted her results had actually come back negative and it was all unnecessary. <laughs> oh. Power tends to corrupt. Absolute yes. power corrupts absolutely. It sure freaking does. Yes. <laughs> I got no boobs now. Yeah. Got a bastard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, four days after that surgery, yes, it, it was all unnecessary. You didn't need to have that. Who, who said that? <laughs> well, uh, Elizabeth Dawes, who is now 39, tells the Sentinel she's still dealing with the pain, the loss of sensation, and a hit to her self-confidence from the extensive scarring. 
I'm absolutely appalled at what I've been through, and I'm still struggling to comprehend how this could even happen, she says. I'm determined to see justice done, and I feel at least deserve an official apology given the huge impact this has had on my life, she says. NHS chiefs have since apologized for the terrible error, reports The Telegraph, and say that the incident is under investigation and that they can already confirm that no other patient received inappropriate treatment as a result of any mix-ups. <laughs> yeah. Of course, they're forgetting to mention Mr. Dawson, who had his penis sewed onto his forehead. <laughs> now, but, however, Mr. Dawson has since been silenced. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, there you go. That's that's the uh, poor nurse story. Now, there is a bright side to all this story. Yes. Now. yes. Uh, Hugh Hefner of Playboy magazine has come forward and offered her a set of, quote, tits of the gods. There you go. <laughs> so she's going to be taken care of. Yes. There you go. You see? See, all these, these stories can have a, a nice edge on them if we just work a little harder. We just... <laughs> Just, okay, just make up crap. <laughs> <clears throat> well, speaking of made up crap, you might have heard NBC's Brian Williams tell you this lie. <laughs> yes, the lie, of course, uh, that the news story of Iran seizing an American warship. Yes. Well, yeah, not so much. No. <clears throat> No, no, we can rest easy. Stand down from DEFCON 2. Yes. <laughs> uh, Iran, however, did seize a Marshall Islands flagged cargo ship today after claiming it ventured into Iranian waters in the Strait of Hormuz, defense officials have stated. An incident that could complicate talks about Tehran's nuclear program. There were no Americans among the crew of the Maersk Tigris, though the United States has security responsibilities with regard to the Marshall Islands. The Navy is communicating with representatives of the shipping company, and we continue to monitor the situation, says Colonel Steve Warren, a Pentagon spokes spokesman. Warren, who'd said a Navy destroyer has been dispatched to the area, added, according to information received from the vessel's operators, there are no Americans aboard. There are believed to be about 30 sailors aboard the Maersk Tigris, and its cargo is unknown. It's probably warheads from Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> An Irani Iranian spokesman said, We took it because there are millions and millions of megatons of boom boom. <laughs> <laughs> you filthy American pigs. No yes. longer will my men be forced to bow down to your pantyhose wearing imperialism. Yeah. Each week, we will raise pillars of holy fire in each of your cities until our demands are met. Or until we find the right ship with the right nuclear warheads. <laughs> Uh, well, the State Department says the Marshall Islands is a sovereign nation, but the United States does have full authority and responsibility for security and defense of the Marshall Islands, and the government of the Marshall Islands is obliged to retain, or refrain even, yes. you know, <laughs> refrain, of course, from taking actions that would be incompatible with these security and defense responsibilities. Warren said that the Iranian patrol vessels fired inappropriate warning shots at the ship as it sailed into the Strait of Hormuz in Iranian territorial waters. The ship's master initially refused an Iranian order to move further into Iran Iranian waters, but after the warning shots were fired, the Maersk Tigris complied. The ship issued a distress call after the shots were fired, Warren said, and the Navy then dispatched the USS Farragut a destroyer, to monitor the situation. Navy patrol craft are monitoring the ships as well, he said. The incident occurred at 4 a.m. Eastern in the deepest part of the long-used shipping channel. Although the Maersk Tigris is, was an, in Iranian waters, Warren said the ships regularly transit the narrow strait without in incident under the recognized authority of the 7th goddamn fleet. There you go. The Maersk Tigris is an 837-foot container ship that was headed to the port city of Jabal Ali 
in the United Arab Emirates on Tuesday, according to ship tracking site VesselFinder.com. Its last port of call was in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, where it traveled from Turkey. The seizure at sea occurs as the United States leads a naval blockade of Iran-backed Houthi forces in Yemen. The blockade sanctioned by the UN Security Council is aimed at preventing Iranian ships, weapons, and personnel from reaching the Houthis and their allies who seized the capital, Sana, and ousted the Yemeni president, Adarabo Masuri Hadi. A convoy of Iranian ships suspected of carrying arms for the Houthis that was headed towards Yemen last week turned around and returned towards Iran after being shadowed by U.S. warships accompanying the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt. The Maersk Group, which owns the U.S. subsidiary Maersk Line Limited, is based in Denmark. Maersk Line provides U.S. flagged shipping services to U.S. government and commercial customers, according to the company's website. It's hard to say how or if the incident will affect ongoing talks over Iran's nuclear program. The United States, its allies, and Iran are negotiating the final details of an agreement which sanctions would be reduced on Iran if it gives up the means to make nuclear weapons. Some lawmakers, including Republicans and some Democrats, are criticizing the prospect of an Iranian agreement, citing that the part, the the Tehran regime, uh, their international behavior of the past. Yes. So let that be a lesson to you folks in Baltimore. Yeah, no no Ferguson shoe store torching. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, and you're probably asking yourself, geez, now where did you get the Baltimore thing from the Tehran's uh, history there? Yes. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like, well, we, we know what you did before, and uh, we're pretty sure we know what you're going to do now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it is that time again. Thank you all for coming and hanging out with us this afternoon on HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk in coffee and cigarettes. I want to thank the one, the only, Louis Lawless for, for being here today. He well, needs love, Chris. Come on. Well, I know. you gotta, you got you to dispense more love from yourself. All these people are, are hurting here. Well, don't you worry. I'm going to do nothing but dispense love. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, woman are you married to or living with now? The same one? The, what, the, the mother of the daughter? Or the, was it a boy? No, no, no. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm transgender. It, it's, it's, it's all fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being here, Louie. Also, uh, Gilbert, thank you again for, for all your help. And, and <laughs> hey, you two jokes. Hey, you <laughs> Oh, you're one crazy man. Thanks for being here again today. Thank you for listening and support the show for the love of God. God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, you, you better go lay down for a little while. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And to all of you out there, it's 70 degrees in New York right now and sunny, so I'm going uh, getting some sun with uh, topless Jenny. And uh, if you wanna, all want to hang out and meet us, you, you know where we'll be. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, to the rest of you, have a great night. Uh, stay tuned for Crash Talk tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll be back and kicking somebody in the balls. <laughs> There we go. So remember, uh, life is a poor substitute for video games. Yes. <laughs> Best Talk Radio, HTLA Radio 1.